Pneumatic actuators in machinery and production plant have to be controlled if the energy in the compressed air is to be put to good use in performing operations such as pressing, bending or punching. The control is carried out by means of valves. The operation and means of activation of these valves need to be matched to the task in hand. There are many different ways of controlling a pneumatic system, depending on the nature and the scope of the job. However, they can all be reduced to three basic modes. Press and release control, Hold on control. And sequence control. We'll come back to these later. Any pneumatic circuit contains three levels. At the command level, there is a 3-2 ported valve to set the system in motion, to inject a signal into the system. At the middle level, we might have a 5-2 ported valve as a control element to process the signal and pass it on to the actuators. The actuator, in this case a double acting cylinder, forms a third level. This is the execution level where the command is carried out. The relationships between signal element, control element and actuator are shown in the pneumatic circuit diagram. The actuator, a double acting cylinder marked 1, extends to the right. Its extension rate is governed by the flow control valve 1.3 on the exhaust side. In the middle we have the control element marked 1.2 a 5-2 ported valve. It is operated by admitting compressed air to port 1-4 on the left and has a return spring on the right. 1.1 is a signal element, a 3-2 ported valve. The compressed air source, represented by the circle with a dot in it at lower left, supplies the valves via the feed lines. The dotted lines represent control lines for operating the 5-2 ported valve. The system is set in action by operating valve 1.1. The 3-2 ported valve is the signal element at the command level. The control signal output takes place at the middle level. The 5-2 ported valve is the control element which provides the cylinder with compressed air. The actuator at level 3 carries out the command. The double acting cylinder extends for as long as the signal element is actuated. As soon as the 3-2 ported valve is released, it retracts again. This type of control is like a bell push. The bell rings only as long as the button is pressed. The 3-2 ported valve controls a 5-2 ported valve. The decisive point is that the control element is activated by compressed air from only one side. A spring returns it to the start position. To remind you of the principle of the 5-2 ported valve, the plunger is operated pneumatically from the left. It is returned mechanically by a spring on the right. The sequence of events is made clear by the pneumatic circuit diagram. When the signal element is actuated, compressed air flows via the control line input 1 to output 4 and moves the control element to its left-hand position. Process air is routed to the cylinder, which extends slowly as the exhaust air is restricted.
When the 3-2 ported valve is released, a spring returns the 5-2 ported valve. The cylinder retracts. The signal element operates the control element, which in turn extends the cylinder. The signal is removed and the control element retracts the cylinder. The sequence can be represented in a timing diagram. Cylinder 1 has two positions. State 1 means retracted, state 2 extended. In our example, the cylinder extends in a space of one and a half seconds and retracts in only half a second. The positions of the cylinder are marked on the vertical axis, corresponding to the times on the horizontal axis. First step, extension in one and a half seconds. Second step, retraction in half a second. The total time for the two movements, that is, the cycle time, is two seconds. The third step would be a repeat of the first step, and so on. Another representation is a step diagram. Again, the cylinder has states one and two. First step, extension. Second step, retraction. The times can also be entered alongside the step number, but the time axis is no longer linear. An example of press and release control would be the screwdriver. The compressed air motor turns as long as the button is pressed. An industrial application. This machine presses parts together. The force is applied only as long as both buttons are held down. When either is released, the press opens. When the left hand signal element is activated, the cylinder extends. The 5-2 ported valve then stores the signal. It stays in the same position even though no control signal is present and returns only when the right-hand signal element is activated. The heart of this control is a pneumatic storage element, the 5-2 ported valve which provides the output control signal. It is able to store a signal because there is no spring to return it. A short burst of air is enough to operate the valve. It is therefore called an impulse valve. The valve returns to the start position only when it receives the opposite signal. The storage principle is shown by this film sequence. A pulse of air from the left and the control element switches to the left hand position. The storage device is set. A pulse of air from the right and the pulse valve switches to the right hand position. The storage device is reset. Hold on control represented in the circuit diagram. At the bottom are the two signal elements 1.1 and 1.2. Each of them a 3-2 ported valve. 1.3 is a control element for signal output. Signal element 1.1 operates the 5-2 ported valve. It switches and the cylinder extends. The signal element is released again. The cylinder remains extended until the second signal element, 1.2, switches the control element back again. In other words, it resets it. Here's another variant. The second signal element, at top right, is a mechanical trip. The knob on the piston rod operates a 3-2 ported valve at the end of its travel. That initiates the return stroke, an example of hold-on control with automatic reset. In the circuit diagram, we draw valve 1.2 in the lowest level. It provides an input signal, so belongs in the signal level and not the control or execution level. The symbol represents the follower, which is operated by the knob.
A triangle on the piston rod symbolizes the knob. A vertical bar next to it is numbered 1.2, showing the logical connection to the valve with that number. The first signal element, 1.1, is operated by hand. The extending cylinder operates the second signal element, 1.2, mechanically. The sequence is shown here in a step diagram. This variant allows us to adjust the stroke of the cylinder. By moving the second signal element nearer to the cylinder, we can shorten the stroke. Here, press and release control and hold on control are combined. When the lower cylinder reaches the end of its stroke, it operates a single element in the form of a 3-2 ported valve. This 3-2 ported valve initiates the pressing operation. Pneumatic control of this kind is called sequence control. A similar sequence simulated using two cylinders. A vertical cylinder represents a lifting action. At the end of its stroke, it activates the horizontal cylinder. The horizontal cylinder extends to the right. It represents an ejector. The manual signal element activates the lift cylinder via a control element. It, in turn, activates the upper signal element, which extends the second cylinder. That also operates a signal element, which makes the first cylinder retract. In the pneumatic circuit diagram, cylinders 1, the lift cylinder, and 2, the ejector, are shown next to one another at the execution level, both extending conventionally to the right. At the lowest level, we have the signal input valves, and in the middle, the signal output valves. The valves are numbered according to their relationship with the actuators. The step diagram now shows two cylinders. The lift cylinder is numbered 1, and the ejector 2. Each cylinder has two states. State 1 means retracted, state 2 extended. At the top is an axis indicating the steps and their timing. Step 1. Signal element 1.1 initiates the sequence. It is symbolized in the diagram. The red signal line shows that the signal path leads to cylinder 1, the lift cylinder. It extends, taking three seconds for its stroke. Cylinder 2 remains in the start position. Cylinder 1 reaches the end of its stroke and operates the trip 2.1. Step 2 begins. The signal path leads to cylinder 2. The second cylinder extends. Meanwhile, cylinder 1 remains extended. At the end of its stroke, cylinder 2 operates trip 1.2. Step 3 begins. Signal element 1.2 causes the first cylinder to retract. The second cylinder remains extended. Cylinder 1 retracts in one second. At the end of its return stroke, it operates trip 2.2.
step four begins. The signal path leads from signal element 2.2 to cylinder 2. Cylinder 2 retracts in one second. The complete step diagram with the signal path for all four steps shows a control sequence for a complete cycle. It illustrates the interaction of actuators and signal elements. At this workstation, two positions are processed alternately. The operator gives a signal for the changeover. Vertical cylinders extending downwards press the parts together behind a safety shield. The pressing process is initiated by mechanical trips. Pneumatic controls in production plant have to be supplied with compressed air. Energy is stored in the air during compression. This energy is converted into mechanical work by the actuators. Valves control the path of the compressed air to the actuators. We distinguish between signal elements, control elements and actuator elements depending on their function. The way the control valves are operated depends on the task and the volume of production. Simple systems can be controlled pneumatically. The control elements are operated by compressed air from the signal elements. In larger and more complex production plant, the control is electro-pneumatic. The control elements are operated electrically. The signal elements, such as switches and sensors, then have to provide electrical signals. Logical operations on the signals are then performed by circuit breakers and relays. The next stage of electromechanical control is Stored Program Logic Controllers, or PLC for short. The relays are replaced by programmable sequences. <laughs> 